another episode of the Bear Down Podcast, joined today by Arizona Women's Basketball All Everything, Ari McDonald. Ari, thanks for joining us today. No problem. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. Great to have you here back in McHale Center. Uh, I know you were back for last night's uh, home opener for Arizona Women's Basketball. We'll get to that in a minute, but we got a lot to talk about. Your career was so iconic and symbolic of everything that uh, this program's about. Uh, so I do want to get into it. And we'll start at the beginning. I'm going to take you back to October 29th, 2018. The very first time you played McHale as an Arizona Wildcat. It's an exhibition versus Eastern New Mexico. You you had just transferred here from, from Washington with, you know, following kind of Coach Barnes over. Before your very first game in Arizona, when you get to Arizona and you're getting ready to play, what is going through your mind? Like, like what is where is your mind at at that point? Just starting a new season, I was like, we have to win more than six games. I was like, we cannot go back to that. That was, that was terrible. It was miserable. So just starting that new season, I was like, okay, we have to be better than last year. Like, that's all I'm thinking about. Uh, and your debut, as it were, a cool 20-piece, 10 of 12 shooting, pretty efficient on the, on the area numbers on that. Uh, so that season rolls on. Um, you know, you're continuing to build a name for yourself. You're, you're kind of rising the national prominence. That season, the 2018-19 season, culminates in a WNIT championship here in McHale Center. Arizona women's basketball sets a Pac-12 and program record. Sold out McHale, 14,644 people for that game. What do you remember about that? I remember seeing a lot of red that day. Uh, they were so loud and just throughout that whole season, they were there supporting us win or lose they were there and just when you just think about when I first got here and I set out you can hear a pin drop so then just not being able to hear a play being called and just not being able to hear things you kind of think that's a good thing so I mean always appreciative of the fans and and that was the start of a, of a big run for you and for the program uh through a COVID shortened season into a final four national championship run now, Eric, your career at Arizona, in my mind, is a part of a golden era, of it were, as it were, for Pac-12 women's basketball. You had yourself doing your thing here in Arizona. You had Kelsey Plum at Washington breaking every record there was known to man. You had Sabrina at Oregon. You know, when you were playing against those folks and, and a former teammate of yours with, with Kelsey, you know, when you look back at that time now and, and the names and the talent and the records that were broken, how do you remember that? I just remember that making me better. Just seeing it firsthand, actually being Kelsey's teammates in her break records and just seeing how all the hard work that it took and sacrifice. I knew that I wanted that one day. And then just seeing Sabrina uh, playing against her, that was amazing what she did. And um, just to be along with that company, it means a lot. And it kind of tells everyone and myself where I am. Absolutely. Now we, we flash forward a little bit. Uh, a one of your first maybe major made for TV moments in your career was actually had nothing to do with basketball. It's the 2020 Pac-12 tournament. You're walking off the floor in Vegas and Devon has a plan for you as you're walking off. Walk us through those, those moments of, of that proposal. I was upset because we just lost. Um, all I can hear is like my family calling my name and I'm like still mad about the game. So I wasn't even gonna look over there. And I was like, huh, let me look. And then I looked at him and then I looked at the sign and I was like, wait, what? Like, I was so shocked. Was like, Will you marry yeah. me, right? The whole, they had them spread out through that whole section. Yeah. And that was that was obviously a, a very special moment. I, like I said, uh, a made for TV moment of your career uh, that had nothing to do with basketball and, and you and Devon went out and got married and, and are, are happily ever after here. As your as your career goes on, yes. <laughs> now, uh, one of your I think most maybe uh, memorable accolades, or in my mind, says the most about your game is being a Pac-12 Player of the Year and a Pac-12 Defensive Player of the Year. Now, I think everybody knows you get Player of the Year for getting buckets. You get Defensive Player of the Year for not giving up any buckets. Do you have a, maybe a different sense of pride or, or a different sense of accomplishment for being known as the best offensive player and also the best defensive player? 
I take pride in everything I do. So just, I feel that my time here, people was like, oh, she's like, she can score. Like, no, like, I really take pride in defense. Like, I want to make it hard for my person to score. Like, I want to just take their heart away. Like, I want to just take them off the game. So, I mean, I just took pride in that all, like, three years playing here, so. What, did you, did you have the same kind of approach when it was, yeah, yeah, I can get buckets from deep, mid-range pull up, the little elbow game you had, all with the rat. Like, it was like, no matter what it took, short, medium, long, you were getting buckets. Taking it, giving whatever they were giving me, I was going to do it. That's, that's absolutely right. And you, you took a lot of it from them, let's be honest here. Uh, you went on to break numerous scoring records, uh, one, of the, one of which was the Arizona season record. You break Adia Barnes's record. You were coach at the time. You break it versus Cal with a 30-piece, let's be honest. It's, it's a cool 30-piece. What was going through your mind? What was that conversation like when you're breaking your own head coach's record? It was just funny. Like, I, I wouldn't even know I was close to breaking something until she'll, like, mention it. Then she'll joke around, like, I'm about to take you out so you don't get it. And I just started <laughs> laughing. I'm like, you a hater. But it was exciting uh, just to have a coach who's really pushes for you to break records. It's, it's amazing. Yeah, it, it was a, a very cool moment and a series of moments of you breaking a record. And it was always, like, the shot of Barry in game. And then pan to Coach Barnes right there. It's like, there's where the record used to be. And it was it was, uh, like I said, a cool moment to see time and time again throughout your time here as a Wildcat. Um, and, th and that takes us to area, I think, you know, the, the awesome finish to your career that was three weeks in San Antonio, in the bubble. Um, you know, I think fans and people forget, you know, Arizona you know, had lost in the Pac-12 tournament and kind of went into this of, hey, we're back in the NCAA tournament. And really, back in the NCAA tournament with a bit, of a bit of a notation of, you guys should have been in and hosting in 2020. COVID hits, cancels that out. So it's a long time coming when you get back to the NCAA tournament, you're in San Antonio. When you see the name called and we're on the floor here in McHale, what is that feeling like to finally be back in the NCAA tournament? Just hearing our names called is an amazing feeling. Uh, I haven't been to the tournament since my freshman year at Washington. And just to hear our names called and just to think about my teammates who has never been to the tournament, like, I was like, wow, like, this is a big moment right here. Now, it was a crazy journey through San Antonio. I'm going to go, I'm going to go come at you kind of like game by game in this run. First game, Stony Brook. You've had your name called in McHale. You, as you just said, you're happy for everybody who's going to play the NCAA tournament. You step on the court for the first time in the Alamo Dome, that first game. What's what's your mindset like? Let's blow them off the gym. Let's get this win and on to the next one. That was my mindset. And, and you did that. On to the next one was BYU. And, and I'm sure you remember a decent amount of that game. I think, in my mind, the, the part I remember from that game is you go for 17 points 11 rebounds, a double-double for a point guard with rebounds. Is that is that a, a point of pride for you? Is that something you remember from that game? I remember a lot from that game. Just, I think, myself, I underestimated BYU. They gave us a run for our money. So we didn't know which way that game was going to go. But then just always having a knack for the ball, just knowing where it is, and just having that feeling like this could be it, like, you could end your career right here. And so I was just like, I didn't want to go home. So I just had to give it all I got and just push through. And push through, Sweet 16, Texas A&M, right? The, the first Power 5 program you guys faced there. Um, this game is uh, and what, what a lot of people would say was when your profile in the tournament run started to elevate more because it's Sweet 16, it's Power 5 program, it's Texas A&M, a, a historically great program. And it's the first of your several 30 point showings and you go off for six threes and start this even insane run that's even more crazy than the run you're already on at that point texas a&m what do we remember what do we how do we look back at that game i remember in warm-ups uh just looking at texas a&m just seeing like their body language and how they were moving i'm like they're underestimating us. Like, I can just see that they're just not, just nonchalant. And then they was like, somebody was like, oh, they're talking to me. I said, they're going to smack you guys. I said, okay. And it just came out with fire that game. Came out with fire. Six threes. Some, some, a flamethrower from deep of fire there for you. Next game, another win, right? Indiana, Elite Eight. 
another 30 apiece for you, but it's a 30 point game with 11 rebounds again. What do we remember about that? What was our mindset for that one? My mindset heading to the Indiana game was this one was for Bindu. Uh, we knew it was going to be an emotional game for her. That was her old team. And so I'm like, everything is on the line. Our season, this is for Bindu. She was there. So I mean, we got to get this dub for her. And then that dub takes you to the final four. First time in program history facing historic, iconic power, UConn. And this game is one of those ones that, you know, it's it's a 10-point victory. Statement game, I don't think is a strong enough term for it. It was, it was a program-changing, program-defining, career-defining game. Uh, I, I would like to know, you know your thoughts more about that. But you score the game's first points. Familiar fashion. You remember this bucket. It's a it's a tray. Mm-hmm. And you remember the play and who got who had you the assist on that one? Um, I don't think I gave anybody an assist. I came <laughs> off a screen. I think I hit a step back three. Step back three. They gave Trandy the assist. So shout out Trandy <laughs> Baptiste on the assist. We'll give her that. Uh, and that's how the game starts. And then things just sort of build. They build. They build. And we reached the crescendo, as it were, of going into a media timeout and you score a bucket and you have perhaps the most iconic moment, not of your career, not of Arizona women's <laughs> basketball, but of all of college basketball. And do you remember what that moment was and what you were doing? Of course. I have my arms crossed. I have court. Of course. <laughs> with a nod. With a nod with a and nod, a, a little bounce. A little bounce. <laughs> When you when you did that when you, when that move happened and I know it was in the flow of the game and you were rolling at that point, did you ever think to yourself like, wow, that moment just took off, or was it later when you just see it, the replay, the gifts, the homages to it of you, it's on shirts, right. you arms <laughs> folded with the nod, just seeing it on replay, like I didn't know it was gonna like become that big at the moment, but then just after the game, was looking on social media and I'm like. Wait, what? Like, everybody was using them. I'm like, that's crazy. <laughs> and it became uh, a, a iconic moment in all of college basketball. And that win, a 10-point win, takes you to the national championship game. The run continues in San Antonio, facing another Pac-12 team, Stanford. I know we've talked to Coach Barnes about it in the past. We've talked to Bendu about it. It was, you know, at that point, it was, hey, we're here. We might as well win this thing. Let's go out there. You know, you had faced Stanford before in the season, but what was your mindset in particular, knowing that you're walking onto the brightest lights, the biggest stage in the college basketball? I was just thinking it was all or nothing. Um, We faced this team before, I was going in there pretty confident. I'm like, third time's a charm. Like we knew each other pretty well. We knew the tendencies, the plays, like we knew how they were gonna guard us. So it was, I mean, we were prepared, we were. you just talking to Coach Barnes about this yesterday. Like it was a tough game. It just it doesn't come down to like the last play. Like it comes down between the plays before that, the missed layups, the missed free throws, the mixed rebounds. So it was it was hard. I'm like, dang, like because I took that loss pretty hard. Like it was tough. And that's how basketball goes. The tough games are the great games, right? If it's a blowout, it's not tough. It's not easy. It's not great. It's not memorable. Um, and at the end of the day, Arizona comes up one point short of a national championship, and yet. In my mind, that entire run of San Antonio was the story, right? That was, that was yes, Stanford was the national championship was the game, but that entire run, and especially now when you look back at it, has to be a moment where you think back and you go, wow, like what did we just accomplish? It was crazy. Just that whole run was filled by doubt and people just like, Arizona, what? Oh, they're going to lose this. Well, he was like, okay, we're going to show you. So, I mean, just the way – my teammates stepped up at the right time. Everybody's doing their role and contributing. Like it was, it was crazy. And your iconic arms folded moment is just part of a social media explosion. I mean, we have like Drake tweeting about the game, LeBron's tweeting about games. When you look back now at, at the kind of the buzz that was around the program and you at the time, what stands out the most? What stands out the most is just the sisterhood about the team. Uh, Everyone, you know, we love each other and we just want to play hard for each other and just make history. And I think we did that. Absolutely. History was made. 
Now, I think people also forget this run happened in a bubble in San Antonio for 20 days, three weeks, outside of basketball, away from the court, away from the games, away from practice, away from shoot around. What was that experience like for you? What did you do? How did you how did you spend that what little time you had outside of basketball chilling in San Antonio? Oh, it was a little boring for me. Like I was going crazy in the room. Like we would just be in the hallway and just hang out because we were so bored. Like we'll go to the snack room, just sit in there and talk for like two hours. Like we were so bored. I mean, of course, we were still in school, so we were doing homework and stuff. And then I think the tournament kind of did a good job, which is like giving us an outlet we all went to the zoo broke it up by teams and time so i mean that was pretty fun but i mean at the same time it was like boring when you got back to the hotel room yeah, especially when you're coming off of electric exciting game after right. game after game and then you're back at the hotel room you're like well it's like you see your family there it's like you can't even like hang out with them or go out to eat with them it, it sucked but i mean <laughs> yeah, that was that was <laughs> life in the bubble uh, and and that that san antonio run the final chapter of it were as it were was you come back to Tucson. Now, uh, you were, had just played in a bubble, you know, fans weren't allowed, you know, had not been allowed back. And yet here you are, you come back, you see 5,000 Arizona fans in the Arizona State, in the football stadium to welcome you back. How did that make you feel? It made me feel good. Uh, despite the loss, the fans are always there and that proves my point and just they're loyal and they're always there win or lose. So, I mean, it felt good. And it was a little emotional. It's like, dang, like this is my last time just driving on the bus and you see people hunking and just, it was crazy. So, I mean, I'm forever thankful for the Arizona fans. Absolutely. And uh, looking back at the whole, your whole career now from that Eastern New Mexico exhibition was, was your first time in McHale for the Wildcats, a WNIT championship, uh, making the NCAA tournament and insane run in the NCAA tournament, Final Four, you know, a lot of first ever's, first ever's, first ever's, first in program history, most in program history. You played a huge part in in the right the raise and the rise, as it were, of the status of the program from Arizona being as as you mentioned, you know, people just counted us out, proved them wrong time and time again, and now you see Arizona as a national program. How do you see? How did you see that playing out? Is it, it was it the tournament run? Was it just hey that was the cherry on top of, of a long process? How do you see this program being a powerhouse now? Yeah, uh, just despite that, what you say like it was a cherry on top because I don't think anyone's seen all the behind the scenes stuff of trying to get this team to where it is and just seeing where we started and each year you've seen the improvement so that's a testament to coach barnes and the other coaches uh and then the players just take it upon themselves to get better and just for the coaches to go out there and recruit better people each year like that's a true testament to them and just you don't see growth like that on a lot of teams in the program so i mean just to see how far we come that was just a cherry on top and despite the loss like i'm still proud of this program and just where we came absolutely i think we all are for sure now, your career now is is hanging in the, in the rafters of McHale, Ring of Honor. You're back in town. You're going to be a, you do an official induction in January. We got the fam roll in there and make a big deal out of it. But you're back here in town, and you saw for the first time your name hanging in the McHale Rafters Ring of Honor. What what were the feelings on that? It's surreal. Uh, so when I first stepped foot on campus and I seen the names and I didn't see too many of the women's players, I just knew my name would be up there one day. And so I worked hard and strived each day and it's finally here. I didn't think it would be so soon, but I mean, <laughs> I'm thankful. Hey, we probably could have gotten you in like after your, after your junior <laughs> year and the consensus all American, uh, but we'll, we'll do it right and, and do it uh, with your, with your fam and later in, uh, in January, McHale. Now you're at the, you're at the season opener last night. Uh, Wildcats roll through Cal State Northridge. Give me Coach McDonald's breakdown of the team. What do you see from this year's Wildcats? I was very impressed. Um, I think they're probably the best shooting team that Coach Barn has had since she's been here. Uh, I was very impressed with the post presence down low. Uh, we have um, Aaronette, solid. Freshman. And I like me, like I'm hard, I'm a hard critic. So for me to say I was impressed and I like someone, she caught my eye, like 
can run the floor, catch the ball, finish, nice footwork. So I was really impressed. And I just like the different looks that Coach Barnes has to throw on the floor. So um, once, you know, they get their defense together, they're going to be a, for be a force to reckon with. So I'm excited for them. Absolutely. We all are. And that excitement is going to carry over to Arizona's next game. Uh, they're playing uh, Sanford at the Sanford Pentagon, playing Louisville, another prime time national caliber matchup. Uh, we're, we'll, we know you'll be watching, and uh, we know you'll be tuning in, and, and we want to thank you, Aaron, for joining us today. Thank you for everything for you did for Arizona Women's Basketball. Thank you for everything for the University of Arizona. Thank you. Absolutely. That will do it. Thanks, Aaron, for joining us. She'll be back here in January for her official Ring of Honor induction ceremony in McHale Center. Until then, best of luck. Bear down. Go Cats.